Welcome to the summary video of the condensation polymer and biomass chapter. In this video, I'm going to cover all the syllabus dot points of the chapter, but I'm going to cover it in very rough detail. To get a better understanding and better appreciation of the whole chapter, make sure to watch some of the individual videos. This video should serve as a refresher in terms of memory. Um, I'll cover each dot point now, so I'll start with the first one, which was explain what is meant by condensation polymer. Again, that important verb was explain, so we have to literally just explain what it meant. So I have two pictures here. The lower one here is a condensation polymer, which is what we have to explain. And each of these is a monomer. And when it comes to making a polymer, what happens is these here join together, these OH groups, and then you have a polymer form, so two monomers or more than two monomers combine to form a polymer. In this case, it's called cellulose, and cellulose is an example of a condensation polymer. An important part when it comes to condensation polymer was that you lose, so we have, we lose a small molecule. This is a loss. We lose a small molecule of water to make sure that the monomer is combined. Whereas the difference between that was the addition polymer and the condensation polymer was that addition polymer, you have a double bond breaks, double bond breaks, and that creates a, mon a, a polymer. So two ethylene monomers have their double bonds being broken to form that polyethylene chain. And here you have only things being added, nothing's being lost. So that's addition polymer, whereas condensation polymer, you have them joined together, but you have a loss of a water molecule. Now it says describe the reaction involved when a condensation polymer is formed. So last time we explained, this time we describe. So all we have to do in this case is explain that, or uh, describe that each monomer, so these are the beta-glucose monomers, each of these is a monomer. Um, they have functional groups on either end, so here and here, and the other one has it here and here. And these functional groups have to be either a hydroxide, hydroxide was the OH groups, or it could be carboxyl acid, which is this one here, or amine group, which is this one here. They have to have them on either end. And what happens then is they join together and you have the bond being right there. And you have the loss of a water molecule. It's very similar to explain, but just slightly different. So function groups that allow condensation reactions to occur on both ends of the monomer. So either the hydroxide groups on both ends, uh, your carboxyl acid group or your amine group. And the monomers attach when function groups react. So when these two react together. And you have the bond being formed plus a water molecule being lost. Next is describe the structure of cellulose. So describe the structure and describe, so give some um, features of the structure. First, we have the carbon side, carbon side chain on, all, on opposing ends. So we've got it here, we have it on the top of this monomer. The next one is on the bottom. On this one again, top, and here bottom. So on, always on the opposite end. Also, the bonds are on the opposing end. So here, it, go, it points upwards. Here it points downwards. Here it points upwards, the bond itself, this part here. And we have a 1,4 glycosidic bond. So one carbon one here and carbon four here, they bond together. So the two different monomers, one and four bond together to form a 1,4 glycosidic bond. And also we have each of these is a cellulose polymer and they come in sheets. So one polymer, two polymers, three polymers, four polymers. And the reason why they come in sheets is because of hydrogen bonding that keeps them together, locks them together and it makes it really strong and tough. So we have some of the characteristics, straight chain, it's insoluble in water, and it's very strong, that's cellulose itself. So that was the first part, describe the structure, and identified as an example of a condensation polymer found as a major component of biomass. So more than 50% of biomass is cellulose, thereby it's a major component, and it's a condensation polymer because we lose water mo and water molecule whenever a monomer react together. And now we have identified that cellulose contains the basic carbon structure needed to build petrochemicals. And we have the word identify, so we just need to state that, that it has. But here we can see that it has. So cellulose 
if we add water, we go from cellulose to glucose. If we use a yeast, we, we ferment it, and we go from glucose to ethanol. With ethanol, we can produce solvents and fuel, and we can also dehydrate ethanol to make ethylene. And with ethylene, we can make plastics, uh, PVC and polystyrene and polyvinyl chloride, and other chemicals. So here we can just see that cellulose has the basic carbon structure to allow us to make these here, the petrochemicals. But it also has another part, and discuss discuss its potential as a raw material. So we have to give pros and cons. So the pros or the advantages is that it's renewable and it produces less pollution. And the disadvantages are that it takes up farming land and has a higher production cost as well. Now we have, we've got another discuss. Discuss the need for alternative sources of the compounds presently obtained from the petrochemical industry. And that we'll discuss. So these are the reasons why we need to have different um, sources. First of all, we have a finite supply of petroleum. Finite means it will run out eventually. Our Australian reserves of petroleum of oil will run out in 10 years. For the rest of the world, it'll be in roughly 50 years. So another reason why we need to get rid of um, a finite alternative source for petrochemicals is because petrochemicals that are made from petroleum take thousands of years to decay. And that means we're going to have lots of plastic lying around. And the third reason was that if you burn pet petrol for cars, for example, that produces lots of carbon dioxide, and that means more pollution. Right, so these three reasons were the discussed reasons why we need to have an alternative source, such as biomass, for production of petrochemicals. And this one here, we've got analyze, so that is a pretty big verb. Analyze progress in the recent development and use of the name biopolymer. So named biopolymer, we had uh, PLA or polylactic acid, but you could have chosen a different one as well. It's had two different points. Name the specific enzyme used to, or organism used to synthesize the material. So name the specific enzyme or organism. We had, when we have cornstarch and we um, hydrolyze it to glucose, we can go from glucose to lactic acid to monomer using the lactobacillus bacteria. So that was A, that was the specific organism or the rhizobus fungi, either or, can help us go from um, glucose to lactic acid, and then we polymerize, so we make polymers to make polylactic acid. That was A. And B, provide an evaluation, evaluation, that's a verb, of the use or potential use of the polymer produced related to its properties. So we have to talk about how we can uh, use this product and how useful it is. So first we go for the properties. It has high tensile strength, which allows us to make rigid plastic containers, so such as strong plastic containers. It has high flexibility and moldability, so we can make plastic bags and garbage bags using that kind of property. And it's biodegradable, so biodegradable means it's going to degrade by itself over in a short period of time, which means we can make dinnerware, food wraps, and other plastic equipments that we don't have to worry about staying around for too long because they're going to just dissolve after a couple of years or even months. Um, now the, the advantages and the disadvantages. The advantages were that it's renewable, which is always good, and it's biodegradable. And some of the disadvantages was that um, it has a higher cost, a much higher cost at the moment than um, normal fossil fuel petrochemicals. And also that we use corn at the moment to produce it, which means we have a loss of farming land. and we, have, we only have a certain amount of supply in terms of farming land, so we can't afford to do that at the moment. Uh, so overall, the use will increase with time, but at the moment it's still quite expensive, and we need to find a different source of making the same bioplastic.